I don't know if you can see it there. So that scar, that's from a bayonet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, could you take me through uh, that story? Yeah, uh, well, <clears throat> this was just before... I was getting ready to come home. I was supposed to get out of there July 27th, 1967, and we got in a firefight, and it was close combat. Uh, and so uh, the enemy was coming this way, and we weren't watching this way. And some of them came around, and we they were on us so fast. You know, it, it was hand-to-hand -hand combat. And uh, he... So I just blocked, I threw my arm up to block it because he was coming at me. It was real close. And he got me across the arm, but I deflected the bayonet up, and he come back and he got me again across the arm. And But I got my hand around and grabbed the muzzle of the gun, and I hit him in the throat. And he went down, and I butt-stroked him in the head with his rifle, and then I stuck the bayonet in him. and. Uh, uh, continue fighting. That's how that happened. Well, I got there July 27th, 1966, and we had several firefights up until then, and, and uh, this is just after Christmas of 66, uh, and December 28th, 1966, walked down to a, a, a stream, and it was kind of open, and there was on the other side was just one tree and then bushes, and we come in from a different angle and we saw that they were uh, that there was uh, kind of bunkers, and so we went around and got in a rice paddy and we came up on the deal in uh, the side and then went down and it was clear open just that one tree and I walked down there. there was one guy be he stayed up behind me. And uh, he, I, I was just looking, and I didn't see him because he was well camouflaged in the tree. Next thing I know, I was on my ass because bullet hit me right here, or in my steel pot. But it, I start, yeah, I was just starting to stand up, and it deflected the bullet up. Came went around and shattered. Three, three pieces went in my head right here. And to this day, it's still very sore. Anyway, I so I was laying there until my I got it really rung my bell. So anyway, I uh, just laid there, and he thought he killed me. And I still had my M16, my hand on the on the stock, and uh, I had it on rock and roll. And he, I figured he was thinking I was dead. And I just, because I was laying, and I just came up and I sprayed the tree. I had a 30-round mag, and I hit every way from top to bottom, and I got him. Took this part of his head off. But he, they, what they did was they get in the tree, they tied themselves off so they couldn't fall out. Well, when I took his head off, or part of his head, he came, and he shot me with one of our own M16s, which he got from one of our guys. So anyway, uh, the M16 came down first, stuck in the ground, muzzle first, just like this, in the mud. And uh, then he came down, and he was tied off. That's how I saw I got him and how I hit him. Uh, it l was early evening, and they finally brought a medevac in and got me and one other guy that was wounded out. And we went up to uh, uh, 67th of that in Quinyan. And uh they I was I was the last guy operated that night, which was actually a, just before midnight. I was the last one because my wound was not severe, hurt hurt the hell out of me which I still have problems today because it snapped my head so bad. I have problems with my neck. When I got hit in the side uh, was uh, we had uh, uh, four of us, and they uh, killed three of our guys, and we were trying to get them out, medevac out, because, well, they were dead, but they take the bodies. And uh, 
then they come at us from two sides. And I was laying facing this way, and there was a gook coming right across this rice paddy, and he threw a grenade, and that uh, went off right behind my left leg, and uh, got shrapnel on my leg, come right up my body, and hit me. Uh, it missed my butt, <laughs> and hit me back here. Anyway, uh, and then he, because he thought he killed me. But he, I started to move, and uh, he uh, wanted to get close to bayonet me, but he didn't. I put a round right through his throat, and he just went like this and went down. But by before he fell, I put two more rounds in his chest. You, I'll tell you, you, when you're scared and stuff, you, you're going to do things, and they're not really nice things. It, it was nasty. Uh, Vietnam was nasty. My dad, who was fought in World War II in Europe uh, against the Germans, he said when I told him some of the stuff that happened, he couldn't believe that we fought the way we did and the enemy we fought because he fought the enemy Germans. But, you know, when they give up or something, they were still— he, oh, buddy, buddy, and and he couldn't believe the stuff we faced. And I, I said, well, you were in combat. And he says, yeah, but some of the stuff you did, I couldn't believe it. And, I, of course, and I talked to some other World War II vets because I was in, we were down here, Chapter 470, uh, with the Purple Heart. And we have World War II and Korean vets in it. And I talked to some of those guys, and they said, some of the battles you guys were in, we couldn't believe it. And I said, well, why? You were in, yeah. He says, yeah, we fought them. But, you know, and it was nasty, but not compared to what you guys faced. How true that is, I, I really don't know, because I just tell them what I faced, and that's what they tell me. And, of course, I don't see any reason they'd lie to me and say, you know, uh, it was bad, and and ours was worse. And but they, uh, they said ours was worse. I got wounded. Uh, my the uh, shot in the head uh, was December twenty eighth, nineteen sixty six, and my second wound was February sixteenth, nineteen sixty seven, and my third wound was June eighth of nineteen sixty seven, and my second one was, uh, or my fourth one was. Uh, uh, August of, because uh, I never got out of there, July 27th, so it was August 19th of 1967, then I got to go home. And then the fifth one was uh, April of 68. Yeah, and you said that one was during your second tour, and that one was pretty bad, too. Yeah, that yeah, that, that, that uh, got me pretty good. Uh, I got uh, uh, hit uh, five times by two grenades, shrapnel from two grenades. And uh, that's where I got the two in the neck. And uh, up my back uh, and uh, hit in my uh, yeah, right leg just below my butt. So, <laughs> and of course, the, it, but, it, you know, the one in the neck that put me down. And uh, they finally got to me and pulled me out because I figured that was it for me when I was in the hospital there, and uh, I was, uh, we were up north in Quinyon, and uh, the uh, my battalion commander came in, and he was talking to all of us, and I, uh, he come over to me, and he goes, uh, Sergeant Howard, he says, how are you doing? I said, not good, sir. And he said, well, aren't they taking care of you? I said, yeah, but I shouldn't have been back here. And he said, what do you mean you shouldn't have been back here? I said, I was in Nam uh, from 1966 to 1967, and I come home, and I'm not going back because uh, that was a rule. And I said, then my first sergeant fixed it, so I had to go back when the, you, you, you guys went over to Nam as the 82nd as a brigade of the 82nd Airborne. 
And he says, well, didn't you volunteer? I said, hell no. I said, my first sergeant fixed it, so I had to go back. He hated me. I hated him. We got in a fight. We got in a fight uh, before I went over the first time, and I kicked his ass. And he was a World War II vet. Uh, and I kind of felt bad for doing it because the result, uh, well, he he was pretty spry, let me tell you. Anyway, uh, so, so from that point on, he didn't like me. I told him before when I before I went, I was gonna if I made it back, I was gonna kill him, and I could not find the son of a bitch, could not find him. And I people were telling me that he was still there, but I couldn't find him. I went places that people wouldn't think of going. I went in latrines, just looking to see if he was there, because I was I was ready to go to jail. Oh yeah. Uh, just to kill his ass for making me go back second time at number five. So anyway, I'm glad I didn't find him <laughs> because I'd probably still been in prison or died there. Uh, I just got in. From, they told me I couldn't stay in the service because of my wounds. So they discharged me, and I came home. When I got out, I went back. To, I went to college, you know, People uh, didn't, you know, were leery of us and things like that. You know, well, you, you don't need to worry. We're not going to do nothing to you. And she says, well, you know, one girl says, well, you, you killed and, and uh, hurt people. I, said, I hurt people that were trying to hurt me. And she said, well, that wasn't the way it should be. <laughs> well, you go to Nam and see what you think. I, I guarantee you, you'd be scared. You'll fight or do your best. Uh, but anyway, so that's what yeah, that's what happened, and and it happened it, today. Now, from being told, you know, they hate us. Now they're, I'm getting thanks all over the place. Even today, I, so long after Vietnam, they didn't like what I did, but. You know, at least I uh, I was an Army Airborne Ranger, and I'm damn proud of it. And they can't take that away from me. <laughs>